Welcome back everyone, I'm Zell, and today we got this little guy. This is the Reich Knife Thor 6, designed by Richard Wu. Alright, let's get into it. We're going to do the measurements first, then we'll start looking at this thing because there's a lot to look at. We've got a closed length of about 4.3 inches, a handle thickness of about a half an inch, a closed height of 1.15 and a weight of 2.81 ounces because there's a lot of milling on this guy. Woo! And, uh, well, let's just start getting a look in it, at it. Uh, vertebral. That, that's the word I'm going to use because it looks like we've got a spine running down through here, and then we got ribs. And, you know, I think, okay, well, uh, so where do we go from here? Well, now we've got something that looks like alien stuff back here. More spinal stuff here uh, and here and even across the top of the blade. And I want you to look at that across the top. Look at that from underneath. And look at it all the way around and look at it from underneath again. That is all the way around. That is some pretty interesting milling there. Bunny rabbit down here is getting nervous over this one. And wow. Just, you know, Richard Wu, whenever he goes to design something, uh, as we know from the Thor series, it is interesting. He doesn't do a lot of knives that don't have some kind of intricate milling that makes them just stand out as far as everything else out there. I mean, we've got we and we've got Best Tech and we've got uh, Riate that make super solid, super awesome everyday carry knives. And then we have Mr. Wu, who goes a step beyond uh, same quality as those other brands, but brings design of uh, just I don't even know uh, you guys fill it in for me because I don't even know where to go with this there's so much thought so much CNC programming that went into building this knife that it's just crazy so we went over those numbers let's get the blade out here and our blade is about three and a quarter inches long and uh, it's four millimeter stock, 0.157. And we got an edge length of about three inches with, along with all the other stuff, a perfect edge termination. So, you know, Richard knows his stuff. God, does he know his stuff well. And uh, again, look how that verbal stuff goes right up into the back of the blade. That is just, yeah. Anyhow. We say M390, and I think that says number 29 on there, and I'm not sure what how many of these there were. There's blue and there's silver. <coughs> and uh, back over here, it says Thor 6 right up there, and we are flat ground with that very smooth... Uh, I don't know what Reich is calling this finish, but that is just a gorgeous, smooth finish, and it's it's got some fingerprints on it, so... But, wow! And yeah, this is more of a fawning than anything else, because guys, this is not an everyday carry knife. Could it be? You bet. It is built in every way, plenty good enough to be an everyday carry knife, but it, it really just isn't, because of all the intricate milling. This is one to carry every once in a while, just to feel good about it. Uh, it is an integral design. As we saw back here, there is one piece. Everything here, with the exception of this, is one piece. And the pocket clip is screwed on there. We have a hole uh, right through one of those uh, ribs that you can reach the screw to get that pocket clip on and off. And uh, there you go. Let's do some size comparison. And we're going to do some different size comparison today because this knife is just different. There is a Spyderco Mantra. 
guess that's not too different. There is a CRKT Pilar. Get that one out of there. Here is a Voking. Uh, what the heck was this thing? It says it right up there. T04. That's a knife that we will get to soon. I need to get the video done on it. I'm just, uh, maybe I already have. I don't know. You guys tell me. If I've already done it, tell me I'm silly. And uh, there is, uh, I don't remember what this thing is called, but it is Best Tech's little uh, slip joint, and it is the coolest slip joint that's come out so far in the past couple of years, by far. Uh, we'll talk more seriously about that one another day as well. And since we're talking about Richard Wu stuff, I might as well bring the Risty out here. It's about the same size, and uh, believe it or not, as light as the Risty is, this guy weighs less. Almost half an ounce less, but, you know, there's a whole lot less knife back there. <laughs> Richard has milled everything out of that dude. And uh, that'll do it for that. Uh, we got a good look at the blade. It's M390. Very nice. We'll get it behind the edge thickness. Not that that really matters on this one, but we'll do it anyhow just because we can. We don't need millimeters. Looking at it right around 20 thousandths. So well ground and I can attest to this thing cutting well. Uh, I mean, just does. I've, I've cut, in fact, I've cut my thumb with it more than once because it will guillotine you if you're not careful with it. See, there you go. So let's do our pause and read card and I'll be right back with you. All right, guys, so mechanically, this is an integral. It is put together uh, not in the same way as a Wii, but kind of in the same way as a Wii integral. Uh, first thing we've got is we do have this that holds in your over-travel stop. It does not hold in your stop pin. We do have a uh, buffed-up piece there that is an... Uh, lock bar insert, but get a look at that. That lock bar insert has been machined just as fantastically as the lock bar itself. Uh, now, I said I said the stop pin wasn't under that. It is not. Again, some of that super fancy milling, that stop pin is milled in. It is not a separate piece. It is a piece of titanium that they have milled around and left in there uh that's wow yeah and the more you look at this thing the more those wow factor things come out uh only one place that i can fault this knife is there is a little bit of lock bar rock and it's ever so slight and it's very simply because of the way the lock bar is shaped and you putting pressure on it, you can see it move there just a little bit. There's no fear of it closing up on you, but uh, it will rock just a smidge, which is, you know, I don't know if it's in every one of them, and I don't know that it's a big deal because I'm not gonna be going out doing hard cutting with this thing because this is an art piece, my friends. Absolutely an art piece. So that, uh, we're gonna treat it like any other knife. Throw it in the Levi's and see what we get, and then we'll talk about ergonomics. And there you go. You got your lanyard hole sticking up there, and I haven't carried this one this way. That might be an awful pointy thing to get caught on things, but once again, it's an art knife, so you got to think about that. But that's what it does look like in the pocket. And uh, ergonomically, and, you know, this thing flips good. It will guillotine you. My thumb had a spot on it from being guillotined. Had to go wear one of them knuckle bandages on there. Pretty awful. Flipping action is pretty good. You can lose your grip because they have rounded and smoothed the majority of it, including the jumping back here. Uh, so you got to be fairly, if you're fairly persistent or paying attention, it flips fine. If you're talking a lot like I am and not paying attention, you can run your finger over it. But you know, a little bit more push buttony, and you're in great shape. And uh, 
and it fires out there really, really nice. Uh, ergonomically, you know, it's really, it's pretty dead gum good for as fancy a knife as it is. Richard did not forget about the fact that you might want to use the knife to do something with it. And, uh, you know, there you go. It's all there and it's all good. And it is just a beautiful little knife from the mind of Richard Wu. And uh, are there things that would bug me about it? Uh, yeah, if I were going to go talk to Richard, I would, one, I'd want to get a hold of a few more and see what this, how that works out because I have missed a few flips with it and it's, and it flips so well that it's weird that, that happens. Uh, I would want to talk to Richard about this little bit of flex we've got in the lock bar because I, I don't care for that. I mean, it's not dangerous, it's not causing any problems, but it is flex in the lock bar. It's a little a lot more than you get in most knives. Uh, other than that, whenever it comes to design like this, you know, I've really got nothing to offer because Richard has paid attention to ergonomics. He's not made you an ergonomic nightmare. He's made you a very ergonomic knife that's even got got vertebral, vertebral, vertebral jimping right up through here. There you go. And uh, it's probably artfully one of the coolest knives that has ever come across the desk. Uh, would I want to own one? Uh, you know, sorry, Richard, but some of the other Thor series, yes. Probably not this one, and it's mostly because I lean more on the side of I want to be able to use my knife every day, and I don't need it to be an art piece. Uh, and that's, well, you've seen from the knives that my brother and I designed with Todd Knife and Tool. You know, that's what we do. We design knives to use them and try to make them look kind of pretty so that uh, some of the art guys will pick them up, but function first, form later. And uh, Richard is looking for the complexity of milling, and that's what he's got here, and that's what he's executed so well. Only those two little quibbles that I'd have, and uh, other than that, uh, for an art knife, this is gorgeous. And people are going to complain about the $650 price tag and you don't have any right to complain uh, because the amount of time that this thing spent in the mill and the amount of time that Richard spent drawing this thing and getting all the mill paths and all that stuff done, uh, I know it's a CNC built knife, but this is, my friends, a custom in every way. It come from the mind of Richard Wu. It came out of his mills. And if that doesn't make it a custom, I'm not sure what does. All the time he spent getting this that stuff programmed, all the paths put in, prototyping, I'm sure, over and over again, and making something that is just amazing. And you guys have a wonderful day. The Thor 6, last time I checked, was available over at Blade HQ for any of you that want to lay out that money for it. And uh, they've got it in blue and silver like this one. And I would say that it's available over at Knife Center and a few other places too. But uh, that's just the only place I checked. And it is a beauty. As for this one, it's going to get sent back to Texas before... Uh, before I do something stupid with it and mess it up or something. And you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Click that little bell button so you don't miss anything here that we bring you on the Zelric YouTube channel. And y'all have a good day, and I'll see you next time.